Hello there, I'm Erin Abe, this is Boom Bust, and these are some of the stories that we're tracking for you today. First up, we're talking about debt in all its forms and glory today. Yep, the good, the bad, and the ugly of Portugal's Banco Espirito Santo's resolution plan is at the top of the deck, and what the rest of the Eurozone can learn from it. Then William White is on the program, the former chief economist of the BIS and current chairman of the Economic Development and Review Committee, is joining us live on the show today via Toronto to discuss ultra-easy monetary policy and whether public and private debt is still a problem today post-crisis. Now, also in today's big deal, Edward Harrison and I, we're going to be sticking with this whole debt theme. We'll, we'll be looking at public and private forms of it, and again, how much of it exists post-crisis. You won't want to miss a moment, especially if you got some debt. It all starts right now. Our lead story today, debt. More specifically, debt in the context of Portuguese bank Espirito Santo. Now, late Sunday, Portugal's central bank unveiled a 4.9 billion euro or $6.6 billion rescue plan for Banco Espirito Santo. The central bank revealed the plan to rescue the country's second largest lender by breaking up the bank and pumping billions of euros worth of state money into it. Espirito Santo provided loans to its parent company, Eurofin Holdings, which is a Luxembourg-based conglomerate, which has run into some trouble lately after an auditor found accounting irregularities last month. And the bank also sold billions of euros worth of debt to its own customers. Now, under the 4.9 billion euro plan, depositors and senior bondholders will be sparred, while the bank's non-senior creditors and current shareholders will have to absorb the losses. Now, most of the bank's deposits, branches, workers, and operations will be transferred to a new entity or a good bank, controlled entirely by the Bank of Portugal, called Novo Bank. Now, while Banco Espirito's problems, those problem assets, they'll remain with the bad bank and losses will be absorbed by shareholders and subordinated creditors, like I mentioned before. Now, basically, the bank's current customers and senior bondholders will be protected. So funding for the bailout comes from the Bank of Portugal's Resolution Fund, which is a mechanism designed to help control banking sector risks. A loan from the state will provide the resolution fund with additional capital, which it will likely need. Now, in a statement, the bank said, quote, nothing changes for the customers who will be able to carry out all operations as usual and without disruption. The contents of the contractual relationships with the customers remain unchanged. Now, Eurozone banks are still far, far from perfect, but EU leaders have given themselves the tools to calm market panic by creating a permanent bailout fund known as the European Stability Mechanism and are putting in place the essential elements of a banking union. The ECB is reviewing the assets and resilience of the region's most important banks, and Eurozone states have agreed to rules on how to rescue or wind down banks that do find themselves in some trouble. So will the plan in Portugal prove successful? We'll just have to wait and see. And we're back now with William White of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Mr. White, thank you for sticking around. Now, we just learned that the Portuguese bank, Banco Espirito Santo, is splitting into a good bank and a bad bank. And the equity and debt holders will take some losses there. Now, it brings up the question, and it's a pretty good question, in what way does the banking system transmit or amplify the financial distress of Ponzi borrowers to the rest of the credit system? Well, I, I think that this is um, a very good question and, and entirely pertinent to what's going on in Portugal. The fundamental problem is that if banks have made bad loans, you want to put it sort of, you know, Ponzi loans in the end, but they made bad loans and the loans are going sour, there's a tremendous tendency for the bank, particularly if it's worried about its own survival, to simply pretend that the bad loans are good loans and to evergreen the loans by providing more money to pay the interest, et cetera, et cetera. While all that's going on, of course, it is completely preoccupying for the management. And the question of new loans, and particularly new loans for innovative purposes, the banks are not prepared to do that. And that has real implications for the rest of the economy, because the credit is then not getting through to the people that really need it in order to get the economy moving again. Big deal time with the wonderful Edward Harrison. And today we are discussing debt, public, and private. Yes. Stuff. Now, according to the <laughs> Irish Independent, the average person's debt on credit cards, utilities, and other unsecured loans is 
five times larger than it was at the beginning of the recession in 2008. Ooh. Now, there has also been an increased amount of people declaring bankruptcy. Right. Not awesome stuff. So, Edward, what's going on in Ireland? Talk to me about this. Yeah, so I think that's a good uh, little country to segue into this whole thing because Ireland's supposed to be the country that is doing the best in the periphery. So if you think about, you know, there were the core countries in Europe, Germany, Finland, Austria, those countries, the Netherlands, and then you had the periphery, which was Ireland, Spain, and a bunch of other countries. And Ireland has done the best, supposedly. But here's a country that still has 11.5% unemployment. Uh, you have a quintupling of your unsecured credit in the, in, the, in the country. And house prices are still 40% below where they were at the peak. So, you know, we're still in a world of hurt in Ireland. And the debt is still there because they haven't been able to restructure that debt. At a minimum, the private debt. And then the public debt has gone from 24% of GDP to 123% wow. of GDP, so a 100% increase. Now, Ed, we know that the whole world was hit hard by the great financial, financial crisis, but Ireland particularly hard. So I want to ask you, you know, how does this compare to, to debt, consumer debt here in the U.S.? Well, you, consumer debt it has uh, gone down somewhat, but if you look at the trend over the last 50 to 60 years, we're at a much higher level than we were in, say, the 50s, the 60s, or the 70s. Uh, we're probably on par with where we were at some point during the 1990s. So in terms of deleveraging, uh, the, if we had a recession, uh, it, the potential for a massive deleveraging is definitely still there. And I think that, you know, what uh, William White was saying about the fact that, you know, in aggregate, if you look at the G20, we're at 30 percent more public and private debt together than we were before. It says that in terms of the plans that, that we're trying to work out, how to get out of this hole, there hasn't, there haven't been enough credit write downs. There right. haven't been enough, uh, you know, there's not been enough uh, wiping the slate clean and then letting people start anew. We're the just actually accounts, trying yeah. to increase aggregate demand by increasing the amount of credit, and that was the problem to begin with. Ed, you mentioned, you know, the 50s and the 60s. How come, does this go back to wages? Were we just borrowing to buy now and before we weren't? What, what does this really come down to, in your opinion? Yeah, well, I, I th my personal view is, is that uh, we've seen a stagnation in wages over a larger period of time, and the forces that are behind that are difficult to say. I mean, it could be the fact that you have a whole group of people, a whole swath of people right. in Asia coming online uh, that weren't there before, that are, are very well educated and that are competing for wages with people in the West, uh, in the United States, and in Europe. And so middle class wages have stagnated. And while they have stagnated, at the same time, interest rates have gone down. So what do you do in order to make up the shortfall? Yeah. A lot of people have taken on debt. And, and I think that's where we are. And uh, you can't get interest rates to go down any further. So really, that game is sort of played out. And that's why we're getting this huge, massive deleveraging at I this mean, point. It's pretty scary stuff. But you know, I saw something by Joseph Stiglitz uh, on debt restructuring, basically. Mm -hmm. and, and what does this have to do with what William White was talking about earlier? Yeah, well, I think that, you know, we're looking at uh, potentially, I think that Stiglitz, the one that you're talking about is on Argentina. Yes, so Argentina precisely. defaulted. And I think that we are looking at potential defaults, even within the Eurozone. We already had one with Greece. Right. Greece was actually upgraded two notches by Moody's very recently. But nonetheless, they still have debt to GDP, government debt to GDP of 180%. This is higher than it was in Argentina. So the question is, is how are they going to be able to support this without some sort of backstop from the ECB? So I think that what, um, what uh, Stiglitz was pointing out is, is that when it comes to sovereign debt, Restructuring is a messy thing. Yeah. The whole thing that happened with regard to uh, the vulture funds uh, getting in on Argentina makes it that much more difficult to have these restructurings because you're always going to have these holdouts. How do you get rid of that public debt? Uh, so the concept that you can go from private debt yeah. and then heap it onto the public balance sheet the way that Ireland right. has done. Ed, I'm sorry, we got to go. I'm sure this won't be the last time we talk about that. Thank you so much. That's all from now. Please check out our Facebook page, facebook.com slash boombustrt. Please tweet at us, at Aaron Aid, at Edward NH. From all of us here at Boombust, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.